The most basic way to plan a cave dive as far as gas usage goes is using the rule of thirds. The idea behind the rule of thirds is that we always have a third of our gas in reserve. So we don't ever use more than a third on the way in and we don't lollygag on the way out. So we don't use more than a third on the way out. And we always have a third as backup in case of an emergency with us or with our dive buddy. And the easiest way to use this in practice is once we get in the water to look at our pressure gauge. Let's say that pressure gauge says 3000 PSI. It's pretty easy math. That means after I use 1,000 PSI, I need to leave the cave. And I can't use any more than 1,000 PSI on the way out. And that way I surface with no less than 1,000 PSI. Unfortunately, this breaks down a little bit as soon as we start using cylinders of different sizes. So if we have a buddy team here, and one diver is using low pressure 85s, and the other diver is using regular aluminum 80s, and they go to dive together and they both hit their turn pressure at the same time and they turn around at the same time. So for her, she's used 1,000 PSI out of those 80s. For him, he's used 1,200 PSI out of those 85s. Now, since they're different sizes, she's actually used 53 cubic feet of volume once she's turned around. And he has used 77 cubic feet of volume once he's turned around. Now this is pretty bad planning because if he was to have a catastrophic gas failure, she doesn't have enough gas for both of them to leave the cave. And that's why this is a crucial concept for every cave diver to understand. And that's why we apply dissimilar cylinder, dissimilar gas planning on any dive where the team has different size cylinders. And there's a bunch of different ways to look at this and, and a lot of different math that we can do. Uh, but the goal here is to look at the calculations that make this work and then look at the real life in water method. To understand the similar gas planning, the first thing we need to know is the stats of the cylinder. So an aluminum 80, which you've probably heard a bunch, what does that really mean? Well, 80 is 80 cubic feet which is the volume of the cylinder at its working pressure, its rated pressure, which in this case is 3,000 PSI. And that's what we see on the pressure gauge. You usually get an aluminum 80, and it's filled to about 3,000 PSI. But that volume is contingent on the pressure. So if we have a pressure of, say, 2,500 PSI, then we don't know what the volume is unless we do a little math. Luckily, this math is not difficult at all. All we have to do is figure out the baseline, from the stats of the cylinder, and then either multiply or divide that baseline by what we know. So in the case of this aluminum 80, we know it's 80 cubic feet, rated pressure is 3000 PSI, and we get this number. And that is for a single cylinder. So if we have doubles, we'll actually multiply that by two. But for a single cylinder, if we know a PSI, and we need to know cubic feet, we just multiply by that baseline. If we know cubic feet and we need to know a PSI, we divide by the baseline. So that example earlier, 2,500 PSI, what is that? 66.6 .6 repeating cubic feet, rounded here to avoid Satan. And the opposite of that, if we take 66.7, divide it by the baseline, we figure out it's 2,500 PSI. If we think back to earlier, where one diver had 80s and one diver had 85s, we can apply this baseline math to figure out at what point this diver on the left with 85s should turn around so that way he matches the volume that his buddy is breathing. If we remember earlier, it was 53 cubic feet is the 1,000 PSI that she would turn around. So what needs to happen is this diver with the 85s needs to turn around once he's breathed 53 cubic feet. And that way they have enough gas to exit even if he loses all of his gas. So how do we calculate that? First off, we find the baseline of those 85s, and then we multiply that by two because it's doubles. So we get 0 0.064. So we take that baseline and the cubic footage from his buddy, and we figure out how many PSI that he can use before he needs to turn around. And what we find is that he can actually only use 800 PSI. And that's of course because we rounded down. So then the question comes up of what happens when I get in the water 
and the pressure in my cylinders change because the temperature of the water is different than the temperature that they were filled at. Well, that happens pretty much every time you get in the water. So do you have to do math just like we did with the baselines every time you get in the water? Absolutely not. That would be totally insane. But it's really important to understand the math and understand the concepts, especially if you're diving in teams where you may use different size cylinders, because you need to be able to avoid situations like what we saw earlier with the diver with the 80s and the 85s turning around at their thirds. So what do you do in real life? Well, in real life, having some kind of chart in your wet notes to where you and your team could chat about this is the most realistic thing to do.